Hello Exiles, this is Ryan from Behind Eyes Gaming and I'm back with another Path of Exile video. Today I'm going to talk about making a quantity character to farm ultimatums, whether or not I think it's worth it or if it's better to just kind of go into red maps and get that done. And while I do it, I'm going to try to talk through it while I'm just going to quick do a, a tier 1 jungle valley. I'll elk it and yeah i don't think that anything too crazy and you can see i have like 2000 health that's because i'm a raider with uh with uh wind dancer and acro phase acro and a decent amount of evasion not a huge amount of evasion um and i get a little bit of extra dodge from these gold worms and all of the equipment you see here i use storm cloud right away I put on Bisco's Collar, Bisco's Leash, uh, Thief's Torment, Sedima's Touch, and Goldworm all while leveling. Like, I had pretty much all the gear I have here except for the Helmet and Quiver, which I'm mostly just using for resistances, and this one has a little bit of rarity as well, and life. Um, I basically had all of this equipment while leveling except I had, uh, I had a <laughs> gold... Uh, I don't even remember what it's called. Gold rim? Yeah, gold rim. I had a gold rim helmet and just like some random unique quiver. I think it was a high res bite for the uh, for the stats and everything. But uh, So I'm going to just run through a quick map here and talk about this. So the idea, Toxic Rain's very easy to level. I do plan on respecking this into a Wind Ripper Tornado Shot Crit. Um, it's not going to be that hard to set up. This is like a bare bones basic character. Anybody could build this for super cheap. The most expensive piece of gear here is 10. Um, and yeah, actually, the re reason I made this is I thought, you know what? Ultimatums, especially like the survival ones, they generate a lot of loot. So I thought, okay, I'm going to use this to uh, to get like divination cards specifically i was thinking of farming loyalties for uh fuses get a lot of fuses going um maybe some other ones i was going to mess around speaking of fuses um oh actually i'm not going to show you <laughs> well maybe i'll do it anyway uh you can run these i really hate the stone circle ones and usually just skip them um they're the absolute worst by far and if there wasn't a couple of fusing i might uh yeah, I might just pull this one out and throw in a different jungle valley and hope I get something better. Because I want to show you what the actual true potential is this is. There you go. I instantly got three fuses. See, it's paying off already. Oh, there's a breach here, though. I got to at least do that. I got some of the breach uh, atlas passives allocated. So maybe I'll get like a breach stone or something. Probably not, but possibly. Um... Oop. And luckily, I can't be frozen. Otherwise, this would be very inconvenient. There you go. Uh, because, of course, uh, I'm immune to elemental ailments with this uh, Raider build. That's part of the reason Raider is so powerful. Raider is an incredible build for this. If you haven't played a Raider, this is definitely the league to do it. Uh, I didn't really get anything good there. So yeah, I'm just going to back out of here and... Uh, do that but yeah the idea uh i'm using jungle valley just because it has two very common divination cards it has the gambler and it has the floor's gift and so it was kind of like a proof of concept i wanted to do uh we'll just throw this stuff in here real quick and get another jungle valley out <laughs> feels like a little bit of a waste but i have plenty of jungle valleys and i can always get more so all right um, Frenzy Charge and a bunch of haste. Yeah, it's fine. It's all fine. Um, this build, as you can see, I've actually only died three times. Uh, level 76. I'm not that high yet, but the fact of the matter is I started mapping at, like, 1890 health or something like that, which is ridiculous, and I wouldn't recommend that on any build other than, uh, such a raider. Raiders are really, really good, especially for Magic Find, because you can basically get free defensive layers. All right, what do we got? Defeat Waves of Enemies? This is a little better. Ideally, you get the survival ones. Um, and since I'm running Bisco's Leash, I have Rampage, so you can kind of get a good feel for how many uh, enemies I'm killing in these. And a lot of times, the kill ones will have a similar amount of enemies that you fight overall. Um... 
as the entire map and the survival ones will have like two to two and a half times the enemies that an entire map will have so my idea was i get enough quantity i think i have i can go over exactly how much quantity i have afterwards but i have a decent amount of qu quantity i have a thief's torment gold worm um I have Sedimas, I have uh, Bisco's Collar and Leash, so I am rocking. But as you can see, the phasing here is really all-star. Uh, the phasing lets me just walk through things, and I get a bunch of life gain on hit from the Thief's Torment, which is part of what's keeping me alive. Oh yeah, I'm also rocking a Divination Distillate. I'm thinking of uh, specking out... I, I got a Lyra for leveling. I'm probably going to spec out of that just so I have a uh, lower mono regen and I might switch to double venters gamble so I can more efficiently use the divination distillate because as it is I am not getting uh, much out of it because it goes on cooldown so quickly <laughs> stupid vines all right but yeah um, not much of a threat on low tier maps. Obviously, I wouldn't take this up into red tier maps in its current form and at its current level. Level these up real quick. Um, I can do all the maps. I have a jewel that makes me immune to hinder, or I can do all the mods, rather. So I have a jewel that makes me immune to hinder, which I think is very important to fit into any build that you're going to be doing in Ultimatum League because it makes uh, two of the mods absolutely free. So definitely would recommend that so yeah and here i am so uh, i got my regular rewards and the thought process here and you can see the problem right here so i killed a lot of enemies in that ultimatum i, I i'll have to look at the footage and i'll put it in in post exactly how much it was but you can see just because but i only got one her mask uh divination card and for the amount of enemies I killed and for the amount of loot that's on the floor here, look at this. I have literally an entire map's worth of loot just sitting on the floor. Um, for all of that, it just does not seem worth it necessarily. And the rewards at lower tier are pretty good. The rewards for these lower tier ones are pretty decent, but compared to higher tier ones, I'll, uh, I'm actually, I'll log on to my other character real quick my um, general's cry character and i'll pop in just any red map even like a tier 11 or tier 13 and you'll see that the difference in both loot dropped and in the rewards <clears throat> is great like you can get chaos orbs and stacks from the lower tier ones but it's usually two or three whereas you get four or five pretty regularly in a single stack and it seems like the frequency of getting that kind of reward is much higher in red maps i feel so slow <laughs> uh, switching off a raider so uh, i don't have that many red maps at the moment uh, because I, as you can see, have leveled three characters. <laughs> uh, I've been really alt-heavy. Uh, let's do a, oh, tier 12 atoll. What does this have? Minus resist, enfeeble. Uh, this one's a little sketchy. I'm going to run it, though. I think it's fine. Probably. I might die. Uh, only 5,000 health on this character, but I have a lot of armor and a lot of fortify effect, so it usually doesn't die too much. But yeah, I just want to show, hopefully I won't have to reroll out of this one as far as uh, to get not a stand in the stones one. So yeah, I'm going to pop in here. Uh, we'll do the atoll. Got it right away. Protect the altar. Perfect. And uh, go ahead and put on my, get my frenzy charges going, get all this, and yeah, you just uh, go in a circle. Uh, uh, let me know in the comment section below if you are a clockwise gang or a counterclockwise gang, because apparently there is a little bit of a, a rift in the community. I'm not using my Lion's Roar. Lion's Roar is actually really annoying, even though it gives a lot of damage for this build. I think I lose DPS because of Blade Flurry. Uh, my generals will push things out of it, so I actually tend not to use it uh, quite so much. 
Uh, I'm just going to get the flame things. Most of the mods aren't super scary. You can die to some of this stuff, and people are like, oh, the, the damage ones are really strong. I don't find them that strong. I'm probably going to die to, like, a fire boy during this just because I said that, though. There, so you get a stack of four chaos orbs. This is super common. You, you almost always, in my opinion, it seems like at least I'm going to start going around, like, the more outer edge now, though. Although for the protect the altar one, I guess I should stay inside a little bit more. All right, we got a couple of uh, hazards coming towards us. Just keep moving. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm clockwise, gang. But every once in a while, I like to switch it up, you know. Uh, live live the other side. Go counterclockwise. So yeah, we're just going to finish this up. And already the rewards are definitely noticeably better. But uh, it really, over a lot of different rituals, if you have a, a good build that can do even low red maps, this is a tier 12. And uh, even if you can do lower red maps, it seems more worth it to me. And we'll we'll see what the drop is. We got a breach stone on top of it. Uh, just absolutely living it up. I can't do cooldown on this one because General's Cry uh, is cooldown based. And I will 100% get absolutely wrecked. Like just un <laughs> unable to do anything. It wrecks my whole build. Uh, I can do most of the other mods on this build, but that one will absolutely ruin my day so yeah i'm obvious you can see my kill speed isn't uh super good and i think ooh, 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 i died okay well um but yeah look at that even the loot that's dropped here i guess my point still stands and you saw the rewards whoops i definitely should not have died there i'm not even a hundred percent sure on what killed me i probably got ignited uh, is what I think I got hit by a big hit and chance to cause elemental ailments. Uh, all monster damage always ignites. But yeah, let's just take a look at the loot dropped here. It's probably, it's pretty similar and the actual rewards are much higher. So it seems to me like the quantity or maybe even the spawn rate of enemies is higher. I'm, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to get the um, Wind Ripper build going and I'm going to try to... Uh, work my way up in, into even lower red maps with my quantity raider over the next day or so and I will attempt to do that and see if I make a big difference like if I can full clear these uh, with a wind ripper crit build with uh, oh yeah I didn't even show my quantity so I'll go do that real quick before I wrap up here but yeah if uh, I can do that and it does indeed just drop more stuff overall and higher tier maps, which I suspect it does just based on, you know, my experience, then I think it would be worth it magic finding in higher tier maps if you can. But as it stands, oh yeah, and Grimrow recently did a video as well. Grimrow did a video talking about um, the watchstones, the ones you can get from the Maven fights. You can uh, get rolls on them that will and give you a chance of items dropping uh, uh, with max sockets. Uh, that's really good. But just to get the watchstones is like they're like 15 to 20 C each. And uh, then on top of that, oh yeah, let's go to. So I have 50% uh, quantity, 30% rarity, plus uh, the Biscos gives an additional 49% quantity from normal enemies, which is a majority of them. And then 117 increased rarity uh, from magic enemies, which is quite a lot of them as well. Uh, not the best roll, but it's an okay roll, Biscos Collar. It was literally like uh, three chaos or something like that. It was very cheap. So um, from normal enemies, I'm getting literally double loot. And uh, from magic enemies, I'm getting well over double rarity. So very noticeable uh this build's pretty cool i'm gonna put a uh i'll just go ahead and put a pob in the description below for the magic find build uh it's very easy to replicate it's super cheap uh it's very fast to level because of you know the rapid assault you just get rapid assault the very first time and then you just zoom through i haven't got an uber lab on it i'll get avatar of the chase probably rather than way of the poacher because i can just use blood rage to get frenzies uh so Got that, and I just want to go faster and have a little bit more defense, and this does both of those things for me. So yeah, 
Uh, that's my verdict so far. I am going to do a follow-up uh, with the Wind Ripper, and we're going to see if I can get up into at least red maps with it. So hope you enjoyed a uh, quick little video. I guess it's not so quick at this point, but I just wanted to give my thoughts on the comparison of red maps versus uh, Magic Find. And so far, uh, just build a character that can get into red maps and do that, because I think it's a lot simpler. Or... Uh, if you are going to go ahead and do quantity farming, play Raider because it is uh, really easy to build and really fun. Uh, level Toxic Rain and switch over to Tornado Shot R Wind Ripper later on once you've got a bunch of currency and can get some good stuff. I uh, hope you enjoyed. This has been Ryan from Behind Eyes Gaming, and I will see you next time. Bye!